All right, welcome everybody to a release day draft for Thunder Junction. This has been my like seventh draft of the format, considering early access and some drafts I did today and some paper drafts. And uh, yeah, we opened a really good one here in Bonnie Paul, clear cutter. One of the best rares in the set, so nice to start there. Just massive, comes with a giant blue friend, so we're going to highlight that one for sure. But let's take a look at the rest of the pack. Uh, really like Prairie Dog. Prairie Dog's really strong. Just 2-2 two -two lifelink that keeps growing, has this ability that uh, can make it even bigger. I, I've seen, already seen games soloed by the Prairie Dog. So big fan of that one. Miriam, one of the better signposts in commons, just two mana, three, two. Uh, the mount stuff has been really good. Uh, a lot of the uncommon mounts I found to be some of the, the overperformers, early overperformers, at least relative to where I thought they might be. Uh, Repulse, great. Yeah, great. Repulse is excellent. There's tokens to, to bounce so sometimes it's just like a three mana kill a thing draw a card and even when it's not you get to like bounce a four drop draw a card very good and uh yeah we'll just take the body paul and see here we go all right and i think i'm just gonna follow this up with another blue green card here make your own luck uh i've been really impressed with this card too i think something that might I, i've seen people say they missed this about this card this is just a draw three but you get to cast one of them for free some people read this as like oh you look at the top three and you plot one of the cards no 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 you plot one of them cast it for free next turn but you still draw the other two uh, re really good card. Other cards in this pack, I really like Scalestorm Summoner. Uh, this is one of the better four power matters payoffs. Just being able to, you know, keep attacking, making 3-1 dinosaurs. Holy cow, pretty solid. Irascible Wolverine, I've been pretty impressed with this one too. This has been a good payoff for the blue no tapping out decks. I've already had some pretty good success with those decks. And, you know, we've got some solid black cards here too. Just a four mana removal spell, 2-2 two -two lifelink that commits a crime. Skullduggery is always pretty good. But yeah, we'll see uh, how long we keep on this blue-green train for. All right, well, we're not keeping on the blue-green train with this pack. Like, Drover Grizzly is okay. I was mentioning I like the saddle stuff, but this is definitely one of the weaker ones. Full Steam Ahead is, yeah, it's, it's a fine finisher for the decks that are going wide. I think I'm just going to take Take for a ride here. This is a really powerful card. It's not just an aggressive card. It's an instant speed act of treason, so you, like, commit a crime, take their thing in combat, and you get to, like... Take their 3-3, block their 3-3 that they're attacking with, and, uh, you know, you can do some really good stuff with that. Also, Roadrunner, pretty solid too. 2-mana, two 2-2 two haste, that, uh, kind of like a big ginger brute in a way, but I'll take Take for a ride. Maybe we can end up in some, like, teamer, teamer crime deck or something like that. And, you know, along that line, I think I'm just gonna take Eroded Canyon here. So even if we don't play a red card, like, Take for a ride, I found that these deserts are really high picks, these duels that deal damage. They just do so much for you, and it's it's kind of hard not to care about some part of it. Like, it fixes your mana, it commits a crime, it is a desert. I know, the actual just one point matters too, so I think I'm just gonna take that. There's an Ankle Biter, fine defensive card. There's a Bucolic Ranch as a uh, card for the mount deck. and Another round, a uh, kind of weird build around that actually isn't very good there's not too too much that you can really go off with with another round and so yeah i'm just gonna take a land all right well there's, there's another another round uh, another make your own luck so i could just take that there's also a plan the heist which i think is generally just gonna be a worse although more flexible make your own luck there's an irascible wolverine which you know you, you could still be like a blue red deck and splash the bonnie paul or something like that first back sentry a fine aggressive or defensive two drop depending on what your deck's doing uh but yeah i'll just Take and make your own luck. Now, I have started with, like, you know, two five-mana card draw spells and a six drop. So, we're definitely going to need to lower the curve at some point here. But as long as I've got that in mind, I don't mind. We'll we'll figure it out. Okay, now I can take a throw from the saddle. Just a two-mana bite spell. Uh, I could take another desert here. I actually don't hate that. And, you know, maybe we end up not playing the safer ride, splashing a white card or something. I think I'm going to do that. Like I said, I think these cards are pretty high picks. Also, a, a gold rush, a fine combat trick, silver deputy. Another mana fixer, but I think just worse than the Heath. So I'm just going to keep on taking lands and see where we go. All right, not too much I'm excited about in this pack. There's an Oasis Gardener, which I think is going to be my pick here. One of the lesser mana fixers, but, uh, you know, it gets the job done, especially if your deck is kind of trending into the more four, five color range. I've already played this card a few times and haven't been, like, thrilled about it. But like I said, it kind of gets the job done, fills a role. Rope Master is, you know, a fine five drop. You can play it. Sterling Key Keeper and... Nurturing Pixie, both okay white cards, but yeah, we'll just take Gardener here. Ooh, okay, that's a pretty late prickly pair, and this card is very, very strong. Just your classic preening champion, Dunlin Crabane, inside source kind of card, and yeah, I'll, I'll just take that here, and like I said, maybe we end up more red-green base or red-blue base, splashing the Bonnie Paul, and kind of funny, like, you'd kind of think if, if you said, okay, this card is a green card, and it's triple-costed in the mana cost of the pips, like, how much green and how much of the other color you kind of think it's it's more green it's just this giant thing but um this is actually a conscious effort i think from from watsi to 
make it so that the green cards are not just splashable everywhere. Like, if this was, like, green, green, blue, you could just splash it in any green deck. I think they really want you to be, like, a blue-green deck specifically. Um, you know, the card's going to the right people. All right, I'm going to take Jailbreak Scheme here. This is another card I've been pleasantly surprised with. It's, like, a three-mana, put your thing on top, or they can choose it to put it on the bottom, but... Sometimes it just ends the game, right? Just, like, make your four-power thing unblockable. Put a counter on it. Um, so, yeah, I would take that. Ooh, Savage Smash Wheels. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a card that I definitely don't mind playing. Just a uh, three-mana fight, but plus two, plus two. Push a little bit of damage. Hmm. Am I going to take a gold pan? I do not think so. I, I think this is a uh, stupid a bit too low for fixing. So, I'll just take a Slick Shot Volt Buster over a five drop here. Uh, and then I'd, you call it Cranch. Okay, I don't think I'm going to play this card, but... Yeah, we we might. It might end up in my deck. I, I doubt it, but you know, not much. Oh, okay. Resolvax entry wheeling is great for me. Also another play in the heist, but we don't need another <laughs> uh, expensive draw three. So we'll take the bristle back. And like I, you know, I was like kind of putzing around, figuring out, oh, maybe we splash this, maybe we splash that. If we, if we have blue and green cards coming around the table, oh, last like vault plunder, just day one things, you know. Um, if we have good blue and green cards coming around the table, I see no reason not to keep on continuing with this. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is a pack. So we've got Contagion Engine, which is kind of a strange card, but I think a pretty solid one. Six mana, put a negative one, negative one counter on all your opponent's things. And you can pay for it to proliferate, um, which obviously eventually turns into like a slow field wipe. And the thing that might not be obvious when you first read this card is it sounds like it takes a long time to wipe their field, but you make their field a lot smaller the turn it comes down. And sometimes you do kill some tokens. Um, I don't think I'm going to take an expensive card here, though. Uh, there's a Doc Orlock, which has been a pretty good card if you've got enough plot stuff going on. There's also a Dust Animus. And this one's really tempting because uh, it's great. <laughs> it's very, very strong. And we do have a White Land, so I actually think I'm going to take that. Like, if we were heavier on the plot stuff, I would probably take the Doc here. But Dust Animus is really busto. It just If you can plot it early, cast it on turn 5 um, for free, it's a gigantic lifelink flyer. Oh, speaking of busto. All right, well, that's a good one. Ornery Tumblewag is, uh, yeah, just a great card. It's going to be a must-kill for the opponent. If, if this sticks around, your opponent's going to lose. And, yeah, happy to take that. What else is in this pack? Betrayal of the Vault's one that I have not had a ton of experience with, but I've heard from people mixed results. <laughs> like, I mean, it, it's just the nature of the card, right? Sometimes it's going to work and you get your two-for-one. Sometimes they have the removal spell or the, you know, negative four to your creature spell. Um, you know, negative four power, it doesn't work. So, it's, you know, jury's still kind of out on this one. I have, like, Dance of the Tumbleweeds, I will say. This is a card that I've been pleasantly impressed with. Had quite a few of these in my pre-release deck. Just, like, the modality of Ramp Spell Early, Giant Creature Leader has been good. Phantom Interference, another one that uh, has been pretty good. But, yeah, happy with the Tumblewag. Kellen the Kid. All right, so this is a three-color card. It's a three-mana, three-three lifelink flyer. And whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, so basically plotting, you can cast something else from your hand with equal lesser mana cost for free. So basically, it's just a 3 mana 3-3 three, three fly. You're going to get some additional value off of it sometimes, but I, I'm not going to value the other uh, line of text too, too much here. There's a Beast Bonder Outcast, and we don't have a ton of 4-power creatures, so I don't think I'm going to take that. I mean, our ordinary Tumbleweg can be 4-power. Um, 2 mana plot is very good, though, but I, I think I'm just going to end up taking this Repulse. So, like, that's how good Repulse is, um, I believe. Also, a Lush Oasis here. Could take that, too, but... We we're a little bit short on interaction. I think Repulse is just one of the best interaction spells you can get. <laughs> okay, Commandeer is a cool one. Uh, probably not one I'm going to take here, but 7 made a counter spell that... Oh, well, not quite a counter spell, but you get to take a creature, a non-creature spell, to be fair. So, uh, a little bit narrow. I have liked this town ain't big enough. Just, like, bounce two of their things, or two mana, bounce one of your things, bounce one of their things. Kind of a runaway together style card. Uh, Snakes Can Veil, also pretty good. Also good when we've got... A ornery tumblewag. Just wait till turn four to play this card. Make it uh, a little more likely that it sticks. Prosperity Tycoon. Also one of the better uncommons. Just four mana four two comes with a friend that can make this thing indestructible. Uh, I think I'm just going to take the snakeskin veil here. Oh, did I run out of time? Sorry, ran out of time there. I, I was going to take the snakeskin veil. Uh, we ended up with the commandeer. I'm not going to really miss it, I don't think. I think we're going to have enough good cards in our deck. But, ooh, Visage Bandit. Or Visage Bandit. However you want to say it. This is another one that has been really good. Um, the These kind of cards generally aren't great. Like, the clones that only clone your stuff. But being able to go, like, plot on three, play a four drop, make an additional copy of that four drop has really impressed me. Um, so I'm going to take that. Also, a blue-white land. Mm, there's a chance I want to take that, too. Again, for the locking of that Dust Animus pick. 
I'm actually not positive. Going back, I, I might make the opposite pick there, um, especially because we don't have anything like awesome to go bandit into a four or five just yet. Copying this is you know superfluous, and also you don't uh, you know you're you're making two legendary things, so that's not really great. All right, there's a Cactarantula here. It's a pretty good card to copy, actually. Yo, as soon as I said that, we we uh, picked up something that's pretty good to copy. It's gonna be five mana in our deck. Uh, you know, a decent amount of the time as long as we pick up some more deserts or some cards to go fetch out deserts. Decimate's a funny card. Um, destroy a bunch of things, but as the reminder text says, you can't cast a spell unless you have legal targets for all of them. So you need your opponent to have a land, an enchantment, uh, a creature, an artifact, or else you just literally can't cast the card. All right, definitely feeling the lack of two, so I'm gonna take the entertainer here over the dance of the tumbleweeds although dance of the tumbleweeds wouldn't be bad in this deck either we got a lot of threes so i'm not really too worried about filling the three drop slot all right another cactarantula that's uh that's a welcome addition a tyrant scorn a pretty good card but uh yeah again i, I definitely do really hope i pick up some more cheap stuff and there we go we one of the one of the better things for us wheels from this uh opening pack so take the dock again not a ton of plot stuff just yet we picked up the bandit and i think that's almost it right um, doesn't matter too much. I'm not, I'm not too pressed about it. I am going to take it over this removal spell because, you know, if you don't have enough cheap creatures, then <laughs> the punch spell gets a little bit worse. All right. And there's a betrayal at the vault. There's also the drover grizzly. Hmm. Yeah. I think I'm into just taking a cheap card at this point, but, uh, you know, all right. There's a razzle dazzler. Yeah. I don't mind that one. It's just like a way to fill in the curve. Oh, another jailbreak scheme. Yeah, I will take that. Ooh, want to take the fall wheels. Okay, that's pretty nice. This, this card's been impressive. Like, it's great if you're committing crimes, but even if you're not, uh, just, you know, negative four draw a card most of the time, as long as you have an outlaw. All right, so we open up uh, an interesting big score card here. Nexus of Becoming. Six mana artifact at Mythic. At the beginning of combat of your turn, you can draw a card. Then you can exile an artifact or creature card from your hand. If you do create a token that's a copy of the exile card except it's a 3-3 golem so a good top end card but i don't think i'm gonna pass this outcast of green blade it's kind of exactly what it, we want for this deck it fixes our mana it's a good threat uh goes gets our deserts i this is just one of the best uncommons and i'm going to take it as such also hell to pay as a sort of inefficient removal spell i would take this nexus of becoming i think over uh, like beast bond uh beast bond outcaster if it wasn't here but yeah green, green blades one of the better cards i could open here hmm okay so there's a satoru the infiltrator which is another card that kind of keys off of casting plot cards yeah casting cards from exile there's a omen pass journey which is like a weird ramp spell that uh, i don't think i will be taking here there's a silver deputy but i i don't think we're actually gonna be splashing that much if at all like this pack i could just see ending up getting a bunch of good blue and green cards and not really needing to splash so I'm going to highlight the Snakeskin Veil here. It's so funny, these play boosters. Like, look how many commons are in this pack. <laughs> like, look how, look how far the rares and the uncommons go. Uh, yeah. Oh! Oh my! Oh me, oh my. Yeah, we are uh, getting the goods in this draft. Going to definitely nab that. Last Soda by the Law. Also one to pay attention to. One of the better white uncommons just comes in, exiles anything. You get a mercenary token. Uh, so yeah, we'll just slam that and see where we go from there. Oh, and where we go from there is a Primal Command. Wow, yeah, we, we are really getting set up with the good stuff. So, Primal Command is solid. It's not like an awesome bomb, but it's very flexible. Uh, sometimes you, like, gain seven, go get the best creature in your deck. Sometimes your opponent's a little bit behind, and you, like, put their land on top of their library, kind of time walk them, and go get the best card from your deck. Uh, am I going to take that over a Lonely... Arroyo. I think I will because it's another copy of Bonnie Paul and our uh, our Hydra we just picked up. But uh, again, I do kind of want another white source for the, the dust animus we have. Okay, so now we can take another good cheap card here, another dock. This Eroded Canyon is interesting, but uh, I don't think I'm going to be playing these red, red cards anymore. So yeah, just locking another good cheap card. Alright, this is interesting. We've got a Decisive Denial, which is a two mana either mana leak a non-creature or fight something. I don't mind this here. Um, am I going to take it over a backwoods? I think so. I guess, if this was a white land, I think I would take it for playing the, the Animus, but I think I like taking the uh, the cheap on-color card here. Voracious Varmint's a card I've been pretty impressed with too. Like, it's not awesome or anything, but it, it's not a uh, filler, I hope this card doesn't make my deck kind of card either. There's, there's a lot of enchantments and artifacts running around that you don't mind blowing up. Uh, Mobile Homestead, also a pretty solid card, but I'll just take the two... I mean, the other one's a two as well, but uh, the two that attacks and blocks on turn two. All right, we'll take a 
Grizzly here over a Rope Master. Although, hmm, yeah, yeah, I think, I think we just have enough fives, have enough threes as well. But <laughs> you know, okay, Void Slime Wheels. It's a counter spell, but Ankle Biter is just gonna be better here. This is a good defensive card. All right, so this deck like really came together. Um, really happy with what we ended up with. There's also a Silver Deputy that might might play that. Another way to go get our, our white source. Red Rock Sentinel. Yeah, I think I'm likely to play this over second deputy, although I don't love either cards really. And yeah, the uh, failed fjording. I might play that too. So yeah, I think the biggest thing we have to figure out is are we going to play this Dust Animus? And kind of depends on how many junky cards we have. And I don't think we ended up with like that many. I you know definitely see a few here or there. But uh I, I'm leaning towards yes, especially because we've got this gold vein hydra that fixes our mana if we want to. So let's just do the uh, the old take everything out, bring everything back in, since we have so many good cards, or so many cards. Whether they're good remains to be seen, I suppose. But uh, yeah, let's go Green Blade, Tumbleweg, two drops in for sure, Snakes can veil in, Primal Command, yep, yep, yep. All this good stuff. Bonnie Paul. I think this is worse than our other expensive cards. I don't really want the the Rope Master. Yeah, I do think I'm going to play this Animus. Like, the, this one Heath really made it so that I'm able to feel comfortable about it. Like, the Green Blade goes and gets it. Um, I guess we don't have anything else. Sometimes you have a few more things. But, yeah, Green, green Blade going to get it, plus some treasure. And then I actually don't even mind playing an Oasis Gardener here because we do have a lot of expensive stuff, right? So just besides the fixing aspect, the ramping aspect of this card is something I'm interested in. I could also play a uh, another desert here just for green blade purposes. I don't think I will. And that's always like a bit of a tension where it's like, well, you have good, you have these deserts and you have cards that care about deserts, or maybe you have uh, committing a crime payoffs and they're not exactly on color. Oh, although we do have two cactarantula, so that that changes the math a little bit. I, I will include the uh, the canyon. And at that point, do I want to play Savage Smash is the question. Uh, I don't think so, because I think our interaction is fine enough. And, like, all of our cards are pretty good. There's really no... You know, besides their, like, cheap defensive stuff, there's nothing that I'm like, oh, I wish that wasn't in here. And we're now two cards above <laughs> where we kind of need to be. Uh, I do think I'm going to cut Decisive Denial over the Failed Fording. Just, just a bit more flexible, less prone to blowouts. And where else are we looking here? Oops, didn't mean to do that, necessarily. Last card, last card. All right, I do like Take the Fall, but we are Outlaw Light in this deck, so I think that's kind of going to be the the easy cut there. All right, yeah, and that's 23. Looks pretty good. All right, see you in the games. All right, by the way, the uh, as you can see, there's a bit of a visual bug where the rankings is, are not displayed. This is best of one. We're playing, like, mid-diamond rank right now. Uh, so if you're a little bit confused, don't worry. It's just the way it is. <laughs> We're not playing the unranked cues. Opponent takes a mulligan. So we can go dock into plot this for a single mana on some turn. We're probably going to play Gardener on turn three instead. Uh, but, you know, it's nice to have that option. Although, you know, there's a chance that I do go dock, plot this, hold up Snakes and Veil. Uh, we'll see what colors they're playing. I, I imagine I am still going to play the Gardener, especially if I draw into some more expensive spells. But I mean, they plot Demonic Ruckus. Yeah, th this is a pretty sick one. Just a one mana plot card, basically, that... Comes in, makes your creature much harder to deal with, and in, when you do deal with the creature, your opponent draws a card, or you draw a card, the, the person who has the Demonic Rockets, it would be very bad if your opponent drew a card. Make your own looks good, too. Definitely makes me want to play the Gardener on turn uh, turn three instead of anything else. I'll do my best to hover on some cards that I play as well, because, uh, you know, it is day one, so I'm sure not everybody knows all the cards by heart. Yeah, this is just a 3-mana 2-2. Two, two. Comes in games 2. Taps that amount of any color. Ooh. Yeah, Laughing Jasper is a sicko. So this is a card I would very much like to get rid of. <laughs> and I think I'm going to probably take the turn to do that. Uh, they're going to get 3 played too, of course. But basically, they get to draw cards on the top of my deck every turn. Equal the number of uh, outlaws they control. Currently just one, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, card is, card is quite strong. And it takes, it turns the cards that you steal into outlaws as well. Uh, so, it's kind of close. I could just let them hit me once, or let them draw one card, and, you know, I cast my make me your own luck. I actually think that's probably a little bit better, to be honest. Next turn, we can just jailbreak scheme. Ooh, we miss? Three lands. All right, well, obviously, it was the wrong play. But, <laughs> all right, fast turn here. You get my 
Failed shorting. Okay. So if they want to cast a bounce spell, that's actually fine. That's actually preferable to them adding to their board, to be honest. And they might just go for that. There's my bounce spell. The uh, bandit cannot copy your opponent's creatures, by the way, in case anybody out there is wondering. All right. Bounce my mana production creature. Makes sense. Yep, get in. All right. Nothing else. Okay. So that's good. So, yeah, this is six mana to do both things. So we're just going to be casting this for uh, for three, plotting this, and playing our tap plan, I guess. Uh, we could also leave up Snakeskin Veil. All right, well, first things first. Let's plot this. No reason not to do that first. Uh, let's get in. Yeah, I think I'm going to just take the turn to play this tap land. Like, it's unlikely that... If they were going to kill, kill my dock, I think they would just have done it already. And also, I don't mind that much if they do. <laughs> it's not like it's making any more mana for me, really. They are still going to draw a card from this Ruckus, because it's worded in a way that when this goes to the graveyard, they draw a card. So, they're just going to redraw their... It's basically a cast a bounce spell, but that is okay. And, and then the really nice thing, this is where the bandit really is great, right? Like, we draw one of our Cactarantulas or something. Ooh, wow. <laughs> we just get to have two of them. So it's a 5-5 five, five flyer. That's kind of it. 5-5 five, five trample flyer. Uh, usually you don't do the sacrifice mode. Uh, okay, so another land, unfortunately. We do have a lot of action in the deck. And yeah, hopefully we uh, draw into, like, even just like a Cactarantula would be really good. Bonnie Paul, probably the best thing, or Having uh, two ornery tumblewags would be good, too. All right. Yep. I cast their Laughing Jasper again. I land. Ooh, geez. Points on all rares. Slick shot show off. Luckily, not going to do too much here. But they are bashing us for quite a bit. All right. And let's see, this is a wizard, and this is a rogue. Okay, so they're going to get to hit two cards per turn off Jasper now. All right, Entertainer. Hmm, is that good enough to copy? Probably no still. Okay, so let's just get in. Oh, I was going to say let's just get in if they block, we snake can veil, but it kind of looks like they've got Skullduggery up. Single black mana. Something you control gets negative, or something your opponent's control gets negative one, negative one, something you control gets plus one, plus one, and that kind of wrecks us. All right, I think I take that back. This is a sorcery speed ability. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure that's what they have, so can't really afford to do that. So we'll just play this. They get to draw two cards off of us. All right, what are the hits? The hits? <laughs> they hit the body fall. All right, all right. Opponent's like, sick. This isn't copy things you own, right? No? Nice little uh, new reach token thing, by the way. All right, opponent is going off harder than we are. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, we'll take a draw step. I don't even think there is something in my deck that will save me here, to be honest. So I guess like Cactarantula into Visage Band. It would be pretty good. Okay, that is not that. All right, we'll go to the next game. How about that? <laughs> All right, game two with a, yeah, a slowish hand on the draw, especially. But uh, Dust Animus maybe catches it back up. And yeah, okay, drawing Ankle Biter was very fortunate there. Also, I haven't found the games in this format to be like blistering or anything. So I'm not too, too concerned about keeping hand like this. Sometimes you get run over. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that curve outs don't exist or anything. But uh, it is not a format where I'm like, ugh, no two drop. Got them all again. Opponent plots a... Oop, plots a Spinewood Paladin. Yeah, pretty solid card. I've been a fan of this one. Uh, let's just cast a Make Your Own Luck. All right, all right. Not, uh, not the luckiest Make Your Own Luck so far. But, you know, hitting two lands is good here. Uh, it's, uh, the lands are appreciated. Alright, the caster paladin. Uh-huh. 
cast a Sterling Supplier. Okay, so gets to put a counter there. Yeah, I'll just block the 4-4 four, four Death Touch. 3-4 Flyer comes and puts a counter on something. Okay, so now what do we do? So we're going to cast a Sentry. No reason not to. Uh, player Forest. This does not have Reach. It does have Trample and Haste and Vigilance. So we could just bash for 5 here. I think what I'm going to do instead is... Plot this so we can play it next turn. And just keep up this repulse. Hmm. I say keep up, but I think it's actually probably better to cast it now because uh Snakeskin Veil is a card. <laughs> and, and to be fair, I guess I should have actually done that first, just in case I drew something else that I wanted to play, but no matter. Alright, take it in. I'm going to cast a Cac Tarantula, sure. Oh, it's going to be a hell of a turn. <laughs> okay, so let's play a land. Play our gigantic Dust Animus. And uh, play a Bonnie Paul. Yeah, <laughs> that was a good turn. <laughs> All right, go ahead, opponent. Mind you, this uh, Dust Animus does get blocked by this Cac Tarantula right now. Ooh, interesting. They choose the plot instead of just playing. So they mean, that means they have something else here. Ooh, Snake Sandville is a nice one. Okay. So, yeah, definitely concerned about the fact that they didn't just play this and left mana up. Uh, so, could mean quite a few things. It means I want to keep the Snake Sandville if I can is, is really what it means. I'll just attack with these two. If they want to trade off either one, I'm cool. We get to draw a card as well. So, that's kind of nice. Uh-huh. Holy cow. All right. That's fine. Top a card. Yeah, totally cool. Alright, and now we just play the Cactarantula, leave up Snakes Can Veil, that's the turn. Yep, play the Paladin again. Mystical Tether. Alright, that is probably going to Yeah, elicit a Snake Skin Veil from us. All right, <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was enough. The opponent saw enough. Ooh, yeah, another pretty good hand here. We got turn five, Cactarantula into Bonnie Paul, as long as we draw some lands. And yeah, so like I could play this on the Ankle Biter on one. Uh, it punishes us if we draw like a two drop. We want to play like the Dock. Yeah, I think it's probably fine just to play the tap land here. I don't think this is the kind of deck that I'm going to win or lose the game by one point. And if I do, it'll make for a very funny draft. <laughs> or a very funny game. <laughs> can all laugh and go, Alex, you say you weren't going to lose by a point. Raven of Fell Omens. This has been a really interesting card. I Jury's still out on it for me. Um, sometimes I've seen it really go off. Sometimes I've seen it do absolutely nothing. Of course, that sounds like a deck building thing more than a Raven of Fell Omens problem. Uh, I guess more than anything, it means you have to consider your deck when you're playing this card, which I think is kind of obvious. I only just block. Okay. Maybe? No, they consider it. They don't. It's all good. And they plot a. Ooh, Rictus Robber. This card's pretty strong. Yeah. Big fan of that one. All right, get in. Not doing too much just yet, but uh, our five and six will make up for that, surely. Desperate Bloodseeker. Milling me, I assume, to get the drain. Mills Jailbreak Scream and the Entertainer. And a Vartman. Okay. That's cool. Play the Cactarantula. Pass turn. The Blood Hustler. So there's a two mana one one that whenever you commit a crime, you put a counter on it, but only triggers once per turn and has a four mana drain ability. Oh, <laughs> I wonder if this bow was not here. My opponent would have attacked and we got, we would have gotten to eat the Raven. Quality of life improvement for sure with this new animation. Huh. Are they just attacking so they can upgrade? Or not even upgrade, I guess. Yeah, okay. Whatever. Uh, 
Am I attacking here? This thing has reach too. Yeah, I mean, it's a six five. <laughs> I think I will be attacking with my six five. When I've got massive stats coming down. Yeah, this this I think is like the most grown testy rare of the format. Uh, I I imagine this is like gonna be the top performing rare on seventeen lands. At least in the top three. You know, not mythic. I'm not really counting mythics, but they could just kill this and then they get to cast Rictus Robber and then they're actually in an okay spot. They get to drain, put a counter here, get six five power and toughness on board. Alright, they kill the bow. Oh, they exile it. Okay, so they're not gonna get the, the trigger here. Hmm, okay. Find a outcaster green blade. So I can Primal Command to go get the best thing in my deck, which is Dust Animus, probably. Uh, I guess, you know, Ornery Tumble Egg, pretty good too. But putting something on top of their, like putting a land on top of their library and going to get a 4 or 5 Lifelinker seems pretty strong. So let's do that. And we'll attack first because Bonnie Paul draws a card. Yeah, put a land down. It does so much. <laughs> It just does so much. Ah, <laughs> oh, they're chumping here, eh? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so Wraths, Black Wraths. There's not one that comes to mind. There might be one that I'm forgetting about. I'm sure the YouTube comments can tell me if I am. Uh, so yeah, put a land on top. Search for... My Animus. Plot this. And here you go. Yep, two to Vigilance, free attack. Cast the Robber because they kind of have to. All right, so yeah, I think it's just a send all attack here. Ooh, Maker unlocks a good one too. Uh, do be careful with Dust Animus, by the way, because it can kind of you can kind of easily shortcut it to when uh, like once you've gotten to five mana, it's it's a big thing. But you actually have to cast this as the first thing um, of your turn, or else it will not be because <laughs> all your lands have to be untapped. Uh, uh, or sorry, not all of them, but you know at least five of them, which often means most of them. It often means you can't cast a spell beforehand, which also you know good to know. Sometimes you can cast a spell beforehand uh yeah we'll make your own look all right Ooh. <laughs> uh i could make another dust out of this there is overwhelming forces i guess that's the black wrath in the format but that's eight mana oh wait i can't i can't even cast this till next turn anyways okay whatever we'll just cast the the green blade and i guess i suppose i should have uh played the tap land here first or not play land so i could play the tap land all right opponents go and I don't think there's a card in the format that gets them out of this. Not this mana cost, anyways. All right. Uh, play the canyon. They have a removal spell for this. They still die. They go to five. <laughs> sure. A Hydra, just in case. Yeah, this, this deck has been pretty juiced, I will admit an unfortunate accident okay so they get to make a blocker kill my thing and then we just bounce the blood hustler and that'll be it cool nice all right nice we got our tumble wag here that plays a blue red land I, one of the scarier decks in the format actually has been like actual factual blue red uh yeah i'll just play this for turn one uh, like when they have all the goods, all the good uncommon payoffs, like the uh, two mana deal to draw a card when you cast your second spell. Uh, Silver Deputy, not particularly scary for me, but this probably implies they're more of a, like maybe a Grixis-y deck. Oh, a Jeskai deck. Interesting. Okay. Oh, okay. That's good too. So now we're going to get to go 
Tumblewag, like Greenblade on three, Tumblewag on four, Hold Up Snakes and Veil. Vale. Oasis Gardener. Okay, so they're, they're doing multicolor stuff, it looks like. Maybe not specifically just Jeskai. And yeah, we'll take the points. Uh, go get a... Unfortunately, it means we can't go get a white source. Uh, I have to go get a forest if I want to play Tumblewag on four and hold up snakeskin, but that's okay. It's a small price to pay. Yikes! <laughs> okay, okay. Well, uh, they played uh, Terror of the Peaks, and that means that I... What does that mean I am going to do? Does that mean I'm going to bounce this Terror of the Peaks and play the Dock instead? I think so. I take three damage. Yeah, I, I think that's why. I, I, I'm, I'm going to take some damage anyways, but... It just gives me, like, the one like one turn of breathing room I kind of need. Oh, Gold Vein Hydra is a good draw. Okay, keep that. Uh, let's get in. With the Green Blade. Uh, play the Dock. Yeah, they play the Terror. Now I get to play the Cactarantula, and it's it's kind of interesting, right? Because I can play the Cactarantula, and if they have a, a large creature, sure, they get me. But, like, in these colors, like, I know they have other colors, but it looks like I would imagine they're base these colors. Like, there's not that many things that kill a five-power thing or a five-toughness thing. Yeah, I think I'm just going to jam this and hope it sticks. If we can untap with this and have snakes can fill up, we're, we're really doing it. Okay, here's green. <laughs> Hate to see that. Buried in the garden. All right, we draw a card, but definitely would prefer our Cactarantula stick around. Yes, would like to draw a card. Okay, there's a jailbreak scheme. That means we can go like Brushwag plus this. They get to kill our ankle biter here with this fortune. Sorry, I I, I didn't read. I didn't hover over this one. I think for for long when uh when they played it. So I will do that now. And I will also hover on fortune too. Basically, fortune's like a blinking machine, which oh I guess is really very strong with uh Terror of the Peaks, eh? All right. Yeah, because they just, like, they just combo kill us here, basically. <laughs> they blink all their stuff. Uh, it is another thing. So, I guess they, they have to, like, attack with this. So, I, I could jailbreak scheme. And I wouldn't just die. But, man. That is that is rough. Okay. Uh, yep. Take three. Play the tumble egg. Counter on the green blade. They do deal us three here, though, is the thing. Or or can kill our tumble wag, because they get to uh if they want, right? They can attack, crew these two, or saddle these two. Blink both of them. And there's not really too much I can do, honestly. Like I, I don't have too much hard removal or any hard removal. And we'll just we'll just let the opponent do their thing. Maybe they mess up <laughs> if we're lucky. Yep, attack with fortune, block, block. Kill the dock. And a bandit. Yeah, not gonna do it. Alright, we had a really good hand, but care of the peaks. I, I was talking about Bonnie Paul being, you know, one of the best rares. Uh Terror of the Peaks, one of the best mythics for sure. Alright. See if we can dodge a few more bombs and draw our bombs. Well, step one. Uh, yeah, we've got the nice little Dock Warlock plus Bandit start. Although, unless I actually have a, another way to draw, or another two drop to play, I'm not actually like saving any mana by plotting this on three. Just kind of feels good. <laughs> I guess I get to represent uh, the counter spell. The Phantom counter unless they pay two. Although, we drew Band, uh, Gardner, so they'll be doing that instead. Oh, Burlfiend's an interesting one. I play with this card quite a bit. 2 mana 2-2, two, two, that when you saddle it, you mill 2, and then when it attacks, it gets plus X plus X, where X is the number of creatures in your grave. Uh, pretty strong card. So, yeah, we just go Gardner. Mm -hmm. I think no attacks. Breaker, environment, okay. Yep. 
So let's, let's see. Do they hit? They hit. Okay, so it's going to attack as a three. They might not want to, though. Okay, they do. Hmm, I wonder if they kill the dock or kill the Oasis Gardener. Uh, I imagine they kill... Well, I guess it makes sense to kill a dock because the varmint can kill the uh, the gardener. Well, I guess that's kind of okay. I, I just don't want this thing to get out of hand. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right. And I guess I could just band it here and then cast Bonnie Paul next turn. It's not a plan bad plan. Alright, they cast a free strider commando. Or plotter, I should say. It's gonna be a five five next turn. Yep. Alright. Well, would have been able to play the Bonnie Paul anyways. They weren't interested in blowing up our gardener, or at least not in lieu of doing this. Um, yeah, we'll just go for it. Play that. They we'll, we'll get to block the Bonnie Paul, but we get a card out of it. Maybe we can draw something that makes the attack a little bit better. This bow sticks around to get pretty big. Ouch. Mm -hmm. Rise of the varmints. Okay, make two two ones. That's fine. Because you want to be going like a little bit deeper with this card. Um, okay, so so Bonnie Paul is when this when you attack. So it's not like a, this has to attack. So I, I could attack with this. They could double block here. So that's not great. I think we just play Cactarantula and chill. Just wait for our attack to get a little bit better. I guess we can play both and chill. Oh, <laughs> the, the bows just did a weird thing there. All right, that was, yeah, kind of the card I was waiting for when I said uh, waiting for a card that makes our attacks a bit better. So we will put a counter on the Gardener and put that thing away. Get in, in, uh, I think we just send, actually. They remove one of the things here. It's not the end of the world. And we're pushing a lot of damage. Like, let's say they have a removal spell. They kill the 7-7 seven, seven and uh, trade with Bonnie Paul. We're still pushing a bunch, and they're left with basically no board. Maybe it was better to put the counter and make Bonnie Paul unblockable. It's debatable. I kind of just like wanted to make one of my smaller creatures more relevant, but. Okay, good turn, good turn. <laughs> yeah. Sort of surprised they didn't like block Zack, which I, I guess is something that, another reason to, to not have put the, uh, the counter on the Gardener, right? I forgot about the Varmint momentarily. We'll steam ahead. All right, that's not going to do it. <laughs> All right, we did indeed. Get another game here with uh, with some of our great rares. All right, send a three and two. With the hand I'm gonna keep, needs uh, needs lands. This is where uh, the bandit shines, right? We can go like tumblewag or, or plot this on three, tumblewag on four, get two of them immediately. And if we are lucky enough to draw the fourth land in that time, I guess we need a third land, but you know, <laughs> fourth land in that time, we can uh, even have sneak skin veil back up. All right, there's a the third land. Step one. And the opponent doesn't play a two, so that's good news. Mm, play a Gila Corsair. This is uh, kind of what I was talking about, one of the really good saddle uncommon creatures. I, I, I think this is a uh, top uncommon. It really just draws a card every turn, basically. It has the nice text of cast uh, play at the end of your next turn, not just uh, this turn. Okay, so yeah, we get to do the cool thing. Plots. They get to attack us, draw a card, of course, but uh, hopefully their turn four isn't amazing. It's a bit of a tall order. I have like a red-green four power deck, but 
or a tall ask. A tough ask? That's it. I landed on it. Ooh, yeah? Yeah, okay. That's good. Most attacks, they make a 3 1. And I do have a power 4 creature. I had a land. All right, all right. Yeah, some powerful starts in this format. I mean, it is day one, so the players that are in higher ranks are going to have the better cards, of course. Uh, so you're going to see, like, you know, when you watch content, you're generally going to see, if you're watching a strong player, you're going to see them have some uh, opponents that are doing some pretty nasty stuff. All right, so, yeah, put a count here. Put a count here. Pass the turn. This might be too slow, honestly. Like, <laughs> I'm probably taking the damage this turn. They're drawing a card and making a 3-1. We're going to have two 4-4s four next turn, and we have a removal spell. So we'll see. We'll see. If their turn 5 here is some excellent card, we're going to be in some trouble. But if they go for a Snakeskin Veil, or if we go for a removal spell, our Snakeskin Veil makes our turn great. Jolene. All right. 4-2. Whenever it attacks, they make a treasure, and they can sack a treasure to ping something. It's a good one. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of considering going for the uh, the preemptive snakeskin veil here. Just like might have to get this summoner off the table. All right, it's risky, but I think I kind of have to go for it. And there's not too too much that gets me here. Does the deal two? That deals three if they cast something else. Snake's gonna veil back. All right, it's a trade. I, I can deal with that. I can deal with the trade here. And I cast the varmint. Still definitely a little bit behind. All right, and yeah, our turn here is not great. We're just topping something. Uh huh. Topping the courser. Jolene attacks. Yeah. Oh, it might have been better top Jolene, because if I block the 3 1, they can sack the treasure to ping. Yeah, that was a mistake, I think. Alright, counter here. Last turn. Yeah, because now they can attack with the 3 1, unfortunately. They also bottomed that. That's also very scary that they did not keep that card on top. That means they have, like, some great expensive card that they. Or looking for lands for. Ooh, yeah. All right, that's that's probably gonna do it. So we're getting dealt a ton of damage here. They can sack this to ping me. Bonnie Paul doesn't even do it at this point, right? Because I'm at a virtual two. We'll see what they do though. Yeah, cast breakly pair. Yep, yep. All right, and. Yeah, I need that a little earlier. All right, good game, good game. All right, so a bit of a deck debrief here. Uh, not the longest draft video in the world. You know, we uh, only went 3-3, but uh, deck was full of some pretty strong cards. But like I mentioned, you're going to see on day one, especially in higher ranks, that the decks are really going to be busted. And actually, that's probably the takeaway from, from this draft, if anything. Like, I know a lot of people kind of get a little bit off-put of draft format sometimes when their first two drafts are a little bit too fast or a little bit too bomb-heavy. So the format's like at the beginning. It, it always is like that. It always evens out as the format goes on. Um, but yeah, but you're going you're gonna to expect to see that kind of stuff in the next few days. So hope this was helpful. Hope you learned a little bit something. Uh, I will, of course, be coming to you with everything I learn as the format goes on. And yeah, hope you enjoyed the format. We'll see you next time.